hello my dear students welcome back to the lecture so in this lecture we will try to see what are the different ingredients what is present in the cement during the manufacturing and also what is box compound so uh, this question you may or may not get uh, sometimes when they try to ask more questions regarding to cement they may ask you this question and of course um, maybe they may ask you when the box compound also but anyhow i uh, will not uh, leave this and we'll try to understand this okay so first try to understand whatever i'm showing you here right so these are the ingredients what is present in the cement that is a, these are the raw materials when you want to prepare the cement right so these are the raw materials that you require so you require lime so they may ask a question what are the raw materials that is required for the cement so you can say this is lime after lime you require silica alumina iron oxide magnesia sulfates and alkalis so these are the percentage what is uh, required for the lime silica and all so again you don't have to remember everything but the first two you try to remember lime will be added in the 62 to 67 percent even you can take uh, 65 percent you can tell no issues silica you can tell 17 to 25 even you can tell 20 to 22 percent is my silica alumina you try to remember 3 to 8 percent rest all things you can tell a minimum amount has to be added right now one thing you understand here in the initial lecture i told you if you take pure lime what will happen pure lime is not going to set early so you can see it here and I, then i told you when we prepare cement what we do we take lime only for the lime we try to add impurities now if you try to observe the same pattern here you see lime we have taken a lime here in the cement these are the raw materials for the preparation of a cement you have taken lime that is calcium oxide but look at the percentage 62 to 67% if instead of 62 to 67% if i take this 100% what will happen this itself is my pure lime but if i take pure lime what will happen it's going to set slowly so i don't want that to happen so what i have done i have taken 62 to 62 to 67% that means out of 100 i have taken only 67% what is the remaining percent 33% then what we are going to do with this 33% so this 33% what we are going to do is that we try to add impurities okay we try to add impurities impurities and what are these impurities these impurities are nothing but silica alumina iron oxide magnesia sulfates and alkalis so this is exactly the chemical composition of the cement now you might have got an idea what exactly was uh, if i don't add silica alumina iron oxide and all this becomes my pure lime along with the lime but i'll restrict the percentage to 62 to 67% rest 33% i'll try to add all these impurities and then my cement is going to get ready this much is clear yeah again there is lot of uh, concept to this uh, i i'll be not explaining it here because it's going to take lot time but a small understanding i'm going to give you it's already explained my concrete technology course so first uh, in cement we try to manufacture cement in two ways one is the dry method the second is a wet me wet method they may ask even this question also how can you manufacture cement i'll take you to that slide yeah so cement can be ma manufactured in two ways uh, one is uh, your dry method the second is the wet method you can see it here dry mix and the wet mix uh, we always go with a dry mix a wet mix we don't use it because wet mix what will happen it will take long time uh, for the cement to come out and a lot of fuel is wasted there a uh, high amount of fuel consumption will happen so i don't want to invest so much of money for the fuel consumption so we don't go with the wet mix in dry mix you don't have a problem of uh, heating it for a long period of time so dry method is a good me method and you can see here dry method is a modern and widely used method okay okay and all these things if you understand from my course it's well and good else not required but always a good thing if you understand they may ask you uh, can you explain the working of a dry method or something like that then uh, chances is very less but still if you understand it's well and good yeah now uh, in dry and wet wet method which method is going to give you a good quality of cement of course in the wet method i'm going to get a good quality of cement in comparison to the wet method dry method the quality of cement is little less but when it comes to cost in wet method huge amount of cost is involved whereas dry method is bit cheaper compared to wet mix so what we try to we try to uh, what is that yeah we try to go with a dry mix only, only even though we get a little less quantity of uh, um, and quality of cement is little less in comparison to wet mix we'll try to add some other thing so that we can improve the quality what this much is understood yeah again you see how the cement is actually manufactured when you try to heat the cement at a temperature of 1400 to 1600 degrees celsius these are the 
clinkers what is formed okay so this clinkers after getting cooled down no they try to become something like this and finally you can see a kind of this these are called as uh, granules or modules you can call them and finally you try to powder that okay and finally you get a cement something like this of course after that you are going to pack the cement okay so this is a history of cement how it is manufactured and all okay yeah so uh, about the wet mix uh, wet method i told you that see this is that wet method in this you will be having a three zones okay that is you have a dry zone you have a burning zone you have a clinker formation and all so it is going to take a long time for you to uh, for the wet mix to happen so that is why we don't try to use the wet mix this much is clear for you yeah other than that yeah this is enough for us other than that one more thing you need to understand i'll just pause my video here you can note down this point so i have explained all these things see here i told you that lime is there in cement silica is also there alumina iron oxide and magnesia right so what this people are going to do what lime is going to do what silica is going to do what will happen if i add, add silica more than 25% so all those i have given explanation here i have explained it my concrete technology course you can learn from here from there but i won't be in a position to explain all these things in a short duration of a course again it will become a lot of theory class okay so i'll pause it here i'll return it in a better way you can take a screenshot and try to understand this okay yeah so again iron oxide this is the importance of adding iron oxide then this is the importance of adding magnesia sulfates and all right? and of course the alkalis this is the importance of that got it so try to note down on your own so you can um, understand all these things we'll go back to the main agenda again yeah yeah so this much is understood next they may ask you a question about the box compound so in box compound we have four box compound the first is called as tricalcium silicate c3s next we have next we have c2s that is dicalcium silicate the next we have tricalcium aluminate and then we have tetracalcium aluminoferrate so try to remember the four name and also their formula of c3s c2s c3a and c4af this is not required this formula is not required and if you can remember try to remember this also c3s we require in 30 to 50 percent c2s 20 to 45 c3a 8 to 12 and c4 af is in percentage of 6 to 10 okay there are a lot of questions which can be formed but uh, this much you have to understand there is no other way okay there is no other escaping from this and uh, the one which is going to give us strength is actually the tricalcium silicate and dicalcium silicate they are the people who are going to give us the strength to the cement right yeah so this much is understood so yeah again when this box compound is formed actually when we take the raw materials we are taking this as a raw material and when we try to heat this particular raw material they are going to fuse together and finally when the cement is formed no in that cement will be having this box compound whatever uh, these things are there whatever raw materials we added at different temperature this raw materials try to combine with each other and as a result of that this box compound are formed so who is box Go box is a person who first identified this particular compounds hence we have given the name as box to that so tricalcium dicalcium tricalcium aluminate and tetra alumina ferrite this much you have to understand yeah then we'll go to the last uh, another two questions we are there so we are going to do the specific gravity test for the cement okay because the specific gravity of a cement is 3.15 but how do you find that and while finding we make use of a kerosene like if you if i ask you to do the specific gravity test for the other particles like for the fine aggregate and all there we try to make use of water and all right but in cement we try to make use of kerosene so what is the reason behind that yeah the reason is very simple if i try to do my specific gravity test along with water then of course when the the moment the cement comes in contact with the water hydration is going to happen and the main purpose is not served i want to find the specific gravity so that is why we try to make use of kerosene now why kerosene kerosene only should be used the specific gravity can be found by using water but since cement reacts with water so we don't use water and use other similar liquid like kerosene to get the specific gravity of the cement so cement and kerosene will not react so if they don't react of course the main purpose was to find the specific gravity will be in a position to find the specific gravity so this is a test we we are supposed to do in the laboratory so if you know this test well and good i don't think they'll ask you this question in the examination how this test is conducted and all but this question can be a interview question that why do you use kerosene and not the water yeah so i hope you have enjoyed it up to here we were able to understand what are the raw materials present in the manufacturing of the cement a box compound is also a very important question 
and then of course the kerosene question is also important but try to understand or try to concentrate more on the box compound and also uh, about the ingredients present in the manufacturing of a cement like uh, alumina we have lime we have silica uh, then we have alkalis and all and also try to understand what are the importance of those compound like what alumina is going to do what lime is going to do and all right a one word answer if you have that is always a good thing so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you